everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. Today, we're going to be discussing a medication known as Haloperidol. Its brand name is Haldol. Now, before I discuss the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. So, Haloperidol is a butyrophenone antipsychotic whose mechanism of action is not clearly understood. This medication does non selectively block postsynaptic dopaminergic receptors in the brain. In terms of indications for use, we do see this medication used in the treatment of schizophrenia. We sometimes see it used in hyperactive behaviors in situations where the hyperactive behavior has not responded well to non-antipsychotic medications. It's indicated to be used in the treatment of Gilles de la Tourette syndrome, and it can occasionally be used to treat severe problematic behavior in children, again, whose problematic behavior has not responded to treatments of the non-antipsychotic type. Now, before somebody was to use haloperidol or be given haloperidol, there are some contraindications they must clear, as well as some precautions and warnings that they should be made aware of. This medication cannot be given to a patient who is in a comatose state of any cause. It would be contraindicated in patients who have a hypersensitivity to haloperidol or any other component of the product. It's contraindicated to be given in Parkinson's disease. Patients experiencing severe toxic CNS depression would not be able to use haloperidol. And finally, it would be contraindicated in patients who have dementia with Lewy bodies. Now, in terms of precautions, this medication is on the Beers criteria, which is a list of medications that the elderly population should either avoid or use cautiously. We would want to avoid using this medication to treat things like dementia or delirium in the elderly population, as it may put them at an increased risk of experiencing a cerebrovascular accident. Their mortality may increase as well. We did mention that it's contraindicated to be used in Parkinson's disease. In the elderly population, if it was to be given, they would be at an increased risk of falls, which could lead to fractures. Sudden death, as well as QT prolongation, has been reported with this medication. However, it's more commonly reported when doses higher than the recommended doses are given or when it's given through the IV formulation. It should be used cautiously in patients who have severe cardiovascular disorders, as it may lead to hypotension or precipitate angina. Dyskinetic movements have been reported in patients in whom the medication have been stopped abruptly, so the medication should be tapered when discontinuation is warranted. Patients should be made aware that heat stroke has been reported with the use of haloperidol. Hypersensitivity reactions such as anaphylaxis, angioedema, and exfoliative dermatitis have all been reported. Potentially fatal neuroleptic malignant syndrome has been reported. The medication would have to be discontinued at the first sign of this. Potentially irreversible tardive dyskinesias has been reported with the use of haloperidol. Patients would be at an increased risk of experiencing this if they were using higher doses or higher cumulative doses. It should be used cautiously in patients who have a history of seizures or in patients who are receiving anticonvulsive medications. If somebody is using this medication to treat mania, there is a chance that there could be a rapid swing into depression from the use of this medication. And finally, patients who are using this medication who have thyrotoxicosis may put themselves at an increased risk of experiencing severe neurotoxicity. Now, once somebody is cleared of the contraindications and made aware of the precautions and warnings, and they're going to use haloperidol or be given haloperidol, they can expect to receive their dose in an oral solution or in an intramuscular injection. If somebody is using the intramuscular injection to treat their schizophrenia, they would typically use a dose of 2 to 5 milligrams intramuscularly, and this dose can be repeated every 4 to 8 hours. The dose can be increased every 1 hour if needed, and the maximum dose would be 20 milligrams in one day. If somebody is using the intramuscular injection to treat their Gilles de la Tourette syndrome, the dosing would be the same as we just mentioned for schizophrenia. In some situations, based on symptomatology, we would dose more aggressively. However, the maximum doses would remain the same. As with all medication, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that patients may experience while using haloperidol, so we'll go over some of those here now. Extra pyramidal side effects are frequent with the use of haloperidol. Some patients may experience hyperactive behavior. Increased muscle tone has been reported. Some patients experience somnolence from this medication. And some patients experience tremors as well. 
Now, some more serious side effects would be a prolonged QT interval, sudden cardiac death, a granulocytosis or neutropenia, dystonia, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, tardive dyskinesias, or the development of a pulmonary embolism. That's all we're going to talk about today with haloperidol or haldol. As always, I'm very thankful you took the time to come by and watch one of my videos. If you did find the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, you can like the videos, share the videos, or most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. That's it for today. Take care.